Welcome everybody to Do The Work Sports. Welcome back for another edition. I hope everybody's day is doing going great. Today we're going to be talking about the NFL Playoff Divisional Round. Starting kicking it right off this Saturday will be the number six Minnesota Vikings versus the number one San Francisco 49ers. The Vikings got the upset victory last week against the New Orleans Saints. And I'm going to be honest with you, it was an upset because I did not see the Saints getting beat in the wild card round. I did not. I seen the Saints going all the way up to the NFC Championship game. Didn't happen. Anything can happen in these playoff games. I knew I figured it would be a good, even matchup, but I just didn't see the Saints getting beat at home by the Minnesota Vikings. Now, before we really start breaking down this, this game, here's some stats about these two teams. The Vikings are 16th overall in offense. The 49ers are 4th. Defense-wise, the 49ers are 2nd in defense compared to the Minnesota Vikings, who are 14th. Passing is the tw- is 23rd for the Minnesota Vikings compared to 13th overall by the 49ers. And the 49ers are 2nd overall in rushing, where the Minnesota Vikings come in at 6th. Listen, this game is going to be, if you're looking for a shootout, I don't think you're going to get that in this game. I think you're going to be looking at, for you guys, myself included, because I like a good old, hard-nosed, low-scoring, every-score-counts type of game. And I think you're going to get that. I think you can get that old-school feel. I think these these two teams are going to rely heavily on the run game and the defense. Um, When you look at the quarterbacking, these guys are mid-court or mid-tier, however you rank your quarterbacks. However you rank your quarterbacks, okay? So for me, I rank my quarterbacks anywhere from usually from 10 to 20. That's my mid-tier. That's how I rank my mid-tier quarterbacks. So, and these guys, you know, they're pretty even when it comes to quarterbacking, in my personal opinion, when you look at the stats, when you look at what they've done. Um, Kirk Cousins does struggle in big games. Um, he didn't struggle last week. He did kind of there towards the end, but he came back and made it up for it. Got his first ever playoff win. Now, this matchup, the quarterbacking's even, like I just said. But when you look at the running backs, you know, I'm going to have to give the edge to Dalvin Cook. The man's a beast. The man's a monster. Yes, I know the 49ers are second overall, but they're like a three-headed machine. When you got you got Molester, you got Tevin Coleman, you got Matt Breda. You know, you got, you got three-headed monster and, and Shanahan knows how to use it to their advantage, but I don't think that it's I, – I just don't think that they compare to what Dalvin Cook can do. And you have to remember that Dalvin Cook was injured there towards the end of the, se- towards the, end of the regular season. So that kind of hurt the Vikings in, in overall ranking. Dalvin Cook, when he's healthy, and that's a key point though, when he's healthy, he's almost, he is a beast, and he's almost unstoppable when he's healthy. But when he gets hurt, he gets hurt in a big way. And so if he stays healthy, I think the Minnesota Vikings will need him and will use him a lot to take the pressure off of Kirk Cousins. When you look at the wide receiving core, you got Adam Thielen and Diggs and Rudolph. And I'm throwing the tight ends in with the wide receiving core of things. Compared to the 49ers who have Emmanuel Sanders, Samuels, and uh, George Kittle. Once again, this is an even matchup. I don't think they outweigh each other. I don't think either way. Adam Thielen is dealing with an ankle injury to keep that up to date and keep noted. It does look like he's going to play. Um, I don't see him sitting definitely not in a playoff game. But Adam Thielen's dealing with an, with another injury. You know, he's been dealing, he dealt with a hamstring for most of the season, was out for most of the season with a hamstring injury for a couple weeks. You know, for us fantasy guys who drafted him, myself included, that hurt. That hurt the Minnesota Vikings, not having Adam Thielen out there. Stephon Diggs stepped up in a big way. Now, when you're talking defense, so the 49ers takes this. The 49ers defense is tough. The 49ers defense is nasty. Like I said, it's got that old school feel. You're going to have to beat us. Look, we're, we're, you're not gonna, we're not going to play your game. You're going to play our game. You have to beat our defense with an hour pace and our game. It's a tough defense, man, and I'm being straight up honest with you. Plus, when you factor in the home field advantage for the 49ers, uh, my my pick for this win is the 49ers. I think San Francisco is going to go on to the NFC Championship game. I don't know who they're going to face yet. I'll get into that. 
Um, when you compare everything, I think I don't I don't think it was a fluke win by the Minnesota Vikings in any way. They deserve that win, and I'm one of those guys. I'm not going to take a win away from a team. When you get that win, you deserve that win. You earn that win. But I just don't think Minnesota has what it takes to overcome the 49ers' defense. Now, next game on the list on the Saturday is the number six Tennessee Titans versus the number one Baltimore Ravens. Now, the Tennessee Titans are the unsung hero, at least if you're not a Patriots fan. Everybody's talking about how the Tennessee Titans upset the New England Patriots. And look, the way the New England Patriots have been playing these last couple games, I didn't think this was a big upset. I didn't think it was a surprise. I thought the Tennessee Titans was the better team going into this. When you look at how they've been playing these last couple weeks, especially since Ryan Tannehill took over, you know, you got Gray Bill out coaching coaches. He out coached his mentor. He Well, not his mentor, but he out coached his old coach and Bill Belichick. So I think, you know, you got Gray Bill, who is an awesome coach. You got Derrick Henry, you got Ryan Tannehill, and when Ryan Tannehill is on, he's on. And that's all I got to say about that right now, because I got some content for you. Before we get into it, here's here's the rankings of these teams. In offense, Baltimore is overall is second, where the Tennessee Titans are 12th. Defense was is a big difference here. The Baltimore Ravens is fourth and fourth, well the Tennessee Titans ranked 21st. And when it comes to passing, the Tennessee Titans are 21st compared to 27th by the Baltimore Ravens. And when it comes to rushing, no surprise here, Baltimore is number one. But the Tennessee Titans are third. Look, this game I think is going to be very close, at least in the beginning. I think you're going to see the Baltimore Ravens begin to pull away. And I know it kind of gives away what I, who I think is going to win this game um, at the end. But when you look, when you look at this team, okay, when it comes to quarterbacking, I got one, I got two words for you. One name, Lamar Jackson. That's all I need to say about when it comes to quarterbacking. As good as Ryan Tannehill has played, he's no Lamar Jackson. Lamar Jackson is a running back and a quarterback on one. He is, a, he is an athlete. That's what you label him as. Yes, his position is a quarterback, but he's an athlete. Lamar Jackson, and yes, I'm drinking the truce. I'm jumping on the train. I'm jumping on a hype train. Lamar Jackson's the real deal, folks, and the Baltimore Ravens got a steal getting him when they did. And I'm telling you right now, I'm telling you right now, it's going to be really tough for any team to overcome the Baltimore Ravens. Can it be done? Absolutely. No team is invincible. And I could be wrong. Tennessee might go in there with a chip on the shoulder and get this upset win at Baltimore. And if they do that, then they should go on to the Super Bowl. But I just don't think they can do it. When you compare running backs, when you compare Mark Ingram to Derrick Henry, I give the edge to Derrick Henry. But when you factor in Lamar Jackson, I give the running game to the Baltimore Ravens. You have to factor in Lamar Jackson. You can't stop one and not the and, and the other. You can only stop one. When you got wide receivers, now this pretty even matchup. You got AJ Brown versus Hollywood Brown. I give the edge to Baltimore once again because Mark Andrews, when you've seen what Mark Andrews has been able to do in the passing world. As far as a tight end and receiving world, I should say, the man's been the man's been incredible. This is his rookie season. He's been incredible. I give the edge to the Baltimore Ravens defense. That defense is also nasty. That defense is also p- tough to play against. And then you get the home field advantage. You give it to Baltimore once again. So the winners are Baltimore. And look, do I? In order for Tennessee to win this game. In order for Tennessee to come out on top to get this upset, Ryan Tannehill has has to, has to play an almost perfect game. Derrick Henry has to run almost perfect every single time, and Graybill has to outcoach John Hardball. I don't think all three of them are going to come together. I think maybe two of them will, but I just can't see all three of them aspects coming together for them to really stand a chance to to upset the Ravens. And anything can happen on any given game, and I understand that. And I understand that Tennessee Titans fans, if you think you can win this game, you have every right to think that way. But for me, it has to be, I'm going with Baltimore. I'm going with Baltimore Ravens. Now, Sunday we'll kick it off with the Houston Texans, number four, versus the number two, Kansas City Chiefs. This is all the makings of a shootout, folks. If both these quarterbacks are on, if Deshaun Watson comes out there and he's playing the best game of his life, then you have a shootout on your hands. I think this is going to be a pretty close game. I think this is going to be a great game. I think this might be, I, I'm, I'm calling it. This is going to be the game of the week right here. This is going to be the game of the week that everybody talks about. 
in the in the playoffs. The Texans survived the Buffalo Bills, and yes, I do mean they survived the Buffalo Bills last week. They went in overtime. Buffalo was a handful, gave them all they could handle. Buffalo had the game won, but Deshaun Watson led the, led the Houston Texans back in the second half. It seems like he plays his best games in the second half. If Houston Texans are able to keep this game close early, and even if they do go into halftime behind, if it's a close game, look out because Deshaun Watson plays better in the second half. Once again, here's some stats for you. Overall ranking on offense, the Kansas City Chiefs are 6th, with the Houston Texans are 13th. Defense-wise, the Houston Texans are 28th, and the Kansas City Chiefs are 17th overall. Passing, the Kansas City Chiefs are 5th, and the Houston Texans are 15th. Rushing-wise, the Kansas City Chiefs are 23rd, and coming in ninth is the Houston Texans. This is a pretty overall, over, overall pretty even matchup. That's why I say you're going to see a shootout. I don't think you're going to see a lopsided affair, and this will be the game of the week. I'll say it again. When you look at the quarterbacks, I'm going to have to nod to Patrick Mahomes. I have to give that nod to Patrick Mahomes. Um, the man's the man is just incredible back there. He makes throws that you wouldn't think he can make, and he has a lot more upside than Deshaun Watson. Yes, Deshaun Watson can run. Yes, Deshaun Watson can can pass. But when you look at the offensive line, the Kansas City Chiefs have a better offensive line than the Houston Texans. Deshaun Watson spends a lot of his time having to run for his life back there in the pocket and making plays happen. Um, I think that's going to play a factor in this game. Running back-wise, I do give the running game to Houston. Just, con- just like the Baltimore Ravens, you have to account for Carlos Hyde, Duke Johnson, and you have to account for Deshaun Watson running that football. He's no Lamar Jackson, but you still have to account for him. You can't count him out. You will see him run the ball. You will see him take the, take the run when necessary. You will see it when a hole opens up and no one's wide open. Deshaun Watson's going to run up the middle. When you look at the wide receiving core, this is, this is a pretty even matchup again. Um, you got DeAndre Hopkins for the Houston Texans. You got Kenny Stills. If Will Fuller is healthy, you got Will Fuller. And that's a big if because he spends a lot of his time as good as Will Fuller is. He seems to be injury prone. And then on on the on the Kansas City Chiefs side of the field, you got Tyreek Hill, you got Sammy Watkins, you got Travis Kelsey, and I don't need to really say no more about Travis Kelsey. He's a Hall of Fame tight end. And he, and I'm gonna tell you right now, this will be an even matchup between between this. Do I think that Tyreek Hill is a better wide receiver than DeAndre Hopkins? It's pretty even. Tyreek Hill's faster. Tyreek Hill's on his way. He's got great hands. DeAndre Hopkins is a veteran in this game. He's smart. He's got his speed. So it's a pretty even matchup. When it comes to the defense, I also, even though the stats have the defense being better with the Kansas City Chiefs, this is a pretty even matchup for me as well. Both these teams have proven that they can't stop. They can get scored on. Both these teams can, can have also proven that they can stop people from scoring. So I don't know what's going to happen in this game. Really, I think it's going to be, like I said, I think it's going to come become a shootout. When it comes to home field, the Kansas City Chiefs have the home field advantage. If out of all the games that's this weekend, I think, you know, like I said, game of the week is a big thing. And I can see the Houston Texans overcoming the Kansas City Chiefs. But when you throw in the coaching ability, I think Andy Reid's a better coach than, than O'Brien. I think you're going to see him get out coached. O'Brien, as a, who I'm referring to, is getting out coached. I think this this game really comes down to the quarterbacking. Which quarterback comes out has the better game? That's what it's going to come down to for me. That's what I think this game really comes down to. Coaching and better quarterbacking. And I'm not knocking any of these teams, by the way. I'm just stating the facts, and I'm telling you why I think the way I think. Now, this the next game for Sunday, which is the last game of the divisional round, is the number five Seahawks versus the number two Green Bay Packers. Now, this is another game that could have all the makings of a shootout. I don't think you're going to see that. Um, actually, it'll probably be a low-scoring game as well. But it does have the makings that could be a shootout. You know, the Seahawks are eighth overall in offense, where the Packers are 18th. The Packers are 18th in defense, where the Seahawks are 26th. The Green Bay Packers are 17th in passing compared to the 14th of the Seahawks. And the Seahawks are 4th in rushing compared to the 15th by the Green Bay Packers. 
Look, this this quarterbacking comparison is pretty even. You got Russell Wilson and Aaron Rodgers. Both of these have two different play styles. Both of these teams have two different ways of winning games. Both of these quarterbacks have two different ways of passing. Two different ways of of controlling and uh, being a general of the field. So it's an even matchup for me. This is not the Aaron Rodgers of the past. This is an older Aaron Rodgers. I don't think Aaron Rodgers has played his best football this year. I really don't. I don't think Russell. I think Russell Wilson on the other end has been playing some of his best football this year. Now, when you look at the running back, the running game situation with Chris Carson being up in the air with injury, you know the Seahawks were plagued with injuries on the running side of the field. Uh, running side. I'm giving this to Aaron Jones and Jamal Williams for the Green Bay Packers. Green Bay has has became more of a running team than a passing team. Um, they need the running game to keep to take pressure off Aaron Rodgers and get Devontae Adams open. Now when it comes to to the to the wide receiving department, I'm gonna have to give this over to the Seahawks. Tyler Lockett and DJ Metcalf. These two have been deadly. DJ Metcalf has stepped up in a big way this season. He stepped up in a way that I didn't think he was gonna step up. Um so I really I'm giving this to the wide receiving. I'm giving the wide receiving to the Seahawks. Now when it comes to defense, this is once again this is pretty even. I'll give it to the Green Bay Packers because they're playing at home and they got home field advantage. You know, I'm going to give that to Green Bay. I think they play better when they're at home. I don't think Green Bay plays very well on the road. But who do I think is going to win this game? I think this is going to be the upset of the week. I think the Seahawks will upset the Green Bay Packers at Lambeau Field. I think the Seahawks will beat Green Bay Packers, despite that the Seahawks are 0-2 in postseason games against Green Bay at Green Bay. I don't think Green Bay is going to be able to get this win. Mainly because I think Pete Carroll is going to outcoach Matt LaFleur. That's a big reason why I think the way I think. Listen, I think we're in for an exciting weekend. I love playoff season. You're going to see plays get pulled out, playbooks that you haven't seen. You're going to see see uh, plays be made that you haven't seen be made. That's when you start getting these outstanding plays. I think you're in for an outstanding and and for me, and this is not a hate, by the way. I want you to understand this is not a hate against the. Uh, I'm not taking a shot at the New England Patriots Hill, but it's a for me. I don't know about the rest of you, but for me, it's a brush of fresh air that the Patriots are not in the playoffs now, because that means you're going to have and the Rams ain't in the playoffs. So that means you have you're going to have two teams that you don't normally see in the playoffs in the playoffs besides the Seahawks. You know, I know the Seahawks have been in a couple here in these in the recent memories, but you have a chance to see two different teams go at it again, and that's something I really look forward to. I like that. I like that feel to the playoffs because now it's a breath. It's like a breath of fresh air for me. It really is. But I want you guys to do me a favor. If you like this content, hit that like button, share this video out to your friends, and hit that subscribe button. That way, you always stay up to date on the videos that I come out with. Who do you think is going to win it all? Let me see your predictions. Who's winning it? Who's going to be the upset of the week? And who's going to be the game of the week? Leave your comments below. I promise you I do look at them and they do matter. But thank you guys for tuning in. Like I said, if you like it, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, and hit that share. Thank you all very much.